In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve growth and decay problems using a common base by using our exponential laws. And then I'm also going to take a look at how to solve compound interest problems. So recall the formula that we used to solve growth and decay problems. So that's a equals a naught times b to the power of t over t. So a is our final amount. a naught is our initial amount. The B is our base, which stands for the growth or decay factor. The little t is our time that we are looking for and that we're interested in something, how long something happens. And the capital T is the time to grow or decay by B. So B and the capital T are related. So let's take a look at this first example. So a bacterium is quadrupling every seven days. How many times as great will the number of bacteria be in three weeks as the number now? So our time, our numbers are three weeks and also seven days. Notice the difference in time measurements. So we have a equals a naught, and we have the quadrupling. So we know it's times four, and it's quadrupling every seven days. So we know that this seven should be on the bottom here. And then our time that we're interested in will be the time on the top there. So how many times as great will the number of bacteria be in three weeks? So three weeks will stand for our time on the top, but because the unit of measurement and the denominator of the exponent is days, we also need to change the three weeks to also days as well. So this will be 21 divided by seven. So we have a is equal to a naught times four cubed, which is then 64. So four cubed is 64, I'm gonna place that in the front. So we can now see that a is equal to 64 times a naught which means that the final amount will be 64 times the original amount um, after three weeks. And you can say this or see this by a is equal to 64 times the a naught. Let's take a look at another one. So in two minutes, a sample of radium 221 decays to 6.2 point, sorry, 6.25% of its original amount. What is its half-life? Okay, so the 6.25% um, is going to be our um, final amount. It takes two minutes to do this. We want to know, we know um, our base is our half-life, so that's our B. The 6.2% is our A, the two minutes will actually be our little t. So it says, what is the half-life? So we're actually, this what is, is that we're looking for capital T. So 6.25%, let's change that to six and a quarter percent, which is then actually 25 over 4%. So I know that I want 25 over 4%. I start off with 100% times my base, which is half, so my growth factor, uh, sorry, my decay factor is half, and we don't know how long it takes to decay by half, that's what we're looking for, so that t on the bottom um, is our variable, but we do know that it takes two minutes to take a from 100% to 6.25%, which is what is represented here. So first thing, we need to isolate our base. So we need to get rid of the coefficient here. So we're gonna divide both sides by 100. Or we can also think of this as, actually it might be nicer to write this as times uh, one over 100. So we're gonna times one over 100 on this side too. So we now get 25 over 400 equals half to the power of 2 over t, and 25 over 400 can actually reduce to 1 over 16, 
equals a half to the power of 2 over t. And then 1 16th, we can rewrite that as a half to the power of 4 equals half to the power of 2 over t. All right, so let me move this over here. So since the bases are the same, then we can say that the exponents are the same. So we have 4 is equal to 2 over t. And then we can times both sides by t, divide both sides by 4. So t is equal to 2 over 4, or equals half a minute. All right, let's take a look at some compound interest problems as well. Now the formula is a little bit different for compound interest. Um, there's a little bit more um, preciseness here. So we have P times 1 plus I to the power of N. And N here, in this case, is the total number of periods. So this is the formula that your book uses, uh, but I like to break it down a little bit more so we actually remember where all the values go. So we still have P, 1 plus, and then instead of I, I'm going to say R divided by N to the power of N times T. So this is, I did use the same variable here, but it's actually, they mean different things. So this is the total, the grand total number of periods. How many times we're actually going to increase um, with our base. The I have broken it down into R divided by N because our rate uh, might be compounded in a certain time period, and we need to divide the interest rate by that compounded period. So A stands for our final amount. P is our principal. I is the interest rate. But you have to know that I is the interest rate per compounding period. Now R, in the second formula, it is the interest rate as it stands. But what we need to do is divide it by N, and N is the number of compounding periods. And then finally T is our time, our total time. So how do we know um, what our N value will be? Well, it depends on how it says the money is compounded. So if you say the money is compounded annually, our period will be one. So this is our N value. Semi-annually means two. Quarterly means four, meaning four times a year. Monthly is 12 times a year. Semi-monthly means that we do it twice a month. So this will be 24 times. Bi-weekly, since there are 52 weeks in a year, so weekly is 52, bi-weekly would be 26. So this is actually good for loans. A lot of times you'll see um, people will ask if you want to pay loans monthly, semi-monthly, or bi-weekly. Bi-weekly is the best because you'll actually pay it off quicker because you actually pay off um, more times per year. And then daily is 365. All right, so let's take a look at one example. So how much will you have if you invest $2,000 at 3.7% compounded semi-annually uh, for five years? Actually, I think I'm going to change this question a little bit. So this should say invest $1,000 at 3% compounded semi-annually, but let's say instead of for five years, let's change it in time for your 10-year reunion. All right. So we have that A is equal to 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.037, all divided by 2, and then raised to the power of 2 times 10. It's 2 because it says here semi-annually, and that is your N, your $1,000, that's going to be your sorry, your principal, your p-value. The 10 years is going to be your um, time, 
and then your 3.7% is your rate. Okay. So here you just have to type it into your calculator. Make sure that you use brackets for your base when you raise it to your exponent. And you should get a value of $1,442.85. Not bad for not doing anything. So if you invest $1,000 at 3.7%, at 10 years, you're going to make $442.85.